Most D&D books usually have at least one new magic item in them, right? Game Master's here, and while we've seen the Dungeons & Dragons movie Honor Among Thieves, and we've seen the stat blocks for the heroes within, what we've only been able to guess at is what the magic items do. I mean, if you've seen the movie, you can make a fairly educated guess, but if you haven't seen the movie, well, beware. There may be some spoilers in this video as the items are used in the movie. And while they show up in the movie, obviously we don't really know exactly what all they can do in terms of official rules. Until now. D&D Beyond has released five legendary magic items that are found in the movie, but with official D&D rules for your pencil and paper game so that you can dole them out to your players or simply have the heroes from the movie show up in your campaign with these items. I'll leave a link in the description as to where these can be found. Oh, and stick around. I've got an answer to a question that a lot of folks have been asking about uh, how I actually print these hard copies out. Helm of Disjunction. The first item on the list is the Helm of Disjunction, which requires attunement by a sorcerer, warlock, or wizard. You guys recall the name Mordenkainen. Yeah, as in Mordenkainen presents uh, uh, Monsters of the Multiverse or Mordenkainen's uh, Tome of Foes. Yeah, that Mordenkainen. It seems during his research and adventures that he crafted this wondrous legendary magic item, Helm of Disjunction. Once attuned, it allows the wearer to emit an anti-magic pulse in a 300-foot radius sphere centered on themselves. This pulse can destroy potions and scrolls in that area and all other magic items have their properties suppressed for one minute. Items that the wearer are uh, wearing are, are unaffected. Artifacts were also unaffected. Spells that had ongoing effects are also uh, disjuncted. Uh, they end. The, the, the spell's effect ends. And to add to all of this, the pulse that sends forth is strong enough to knock creatures back uh, within 30 feet unless they succeed on a DC 15 saving throw. If they fail, they're considered prone. That's a pretty powerful helm that Mordenkainen made. Banner of Support. One of the items that is not present in this document, nor is it in the movie Honor Among Thieves, but I'm including it here, is the Banner of Support. Upon it is writ the name of supporters for this channel, DJ Vu, Rod Batten, and Louis Alanis. A mighty thank you goes out to them. And if you'd like to become a member and support this channel, I'll leave a link also down in the comments. But I would also ask that if you're enjoying this video, to please consider giving it a thumbs up. Hither Thither Staff. This ornate walking stick, adorned with a radiant gemstone at its top, is known as the Hither Thither Staff and has four charges, regaining 1d4 of those previously expended each day at dawn. With an action, you can channel the staff's mystical powers to create two linked teleportation portals. These portals manifest upon a flat surface of your choosing within 1500 feet of your position, provided that the surface is large enough to accommodate them. These portals take the form of glowing two-dimensional oval rings, which together create an opening up to six feet in height and four feet in width. Any being or object passed through one portal emerges from the other. Even a moving surface cannot deter the power of these portals, yet the effect dissolves should the portals move more than a mile apart. While holding the staff, you can command both portals to close as a bonus action, thereby ending their effect, or suppress one of the portals causing it to vanish until it's relocated at a later time. In such an instance, the remaining portal cannot be used until the suppressed portal is restored. These mystical portals persist for 24 hours, granting safe and swift passage to all those who dare use them. Horn of Beckoning Death. Next up is the Horn of Beckoning Death, also a wondrous legendary item. It looks a bit like a young dragon's horn and radiates an infernal glow when held. And upon invoking a necromantic chant, the beckoning death itself arrives at the start of your next turn. The beckoning death is a crimson cloud of smoke spreading across a 30-foot radius sphere that centers on the horn. The sphere's radius expands by 30 feet at the beginning of each of your turns. The red crimson cloud of death will dissipate only after 10 minutes or when you break your concentration on the effect. But beware, for any being, including yourself, with nine or fewer hit points that remains within the cloud's grasp shall fall victim to a fate worse than death, and be forever transformed into a zombie under the command of the dark mastermind and the lich Zastam. Also know, too, that once the horn's power has been unleashed, its property shall lie dormant for a full year. Red Wizard Blade Zas Tam is, of course, a powerful lich and the leader of the Red Wizards of Thay. One of their weapons is the Red Wizard Blade, also considered to be a legendary weapon. 
Beware the sinister origins of these grim steel daggers, for they are forged by the twisted minds of red wizards, using a process shrouded in mystery and darkness. The blade's power stems from the negative plane, drawing forth energies that should never be wielded by mortal hands. A piercing attack of this magic dagger strikes death into its targets, as they suffer 3d12 necrotic damage with each hit. Those unfortunate enough to be reduced to zero hit points by this wicked blade shall suffer death, never to rise again, save at the mercy of a deity or being who wields the tablet of reawakening to cast the true resurrection spell. Tablet of reawakening. To combat the dark magic of the red wizards, the witches of Rashomon crafted a solution that brings hope. A tiny stone tablet known as the Tablet of Reawakening, also a wondrous legendary item. It is imbued with the power to counter the very necromancy wielded by those who seek to bring death and destruction. With a single action, this miraculous tablet allows you to cast true resurrection, breathing new life into someone who has been lost to the clutches of death. But know this, once used, the tablet crumbles and turns to dust. It is unknown if the witches have uh, created more than one such tablet, but seeing as there are many red wizard blades, it stands to reason that the witches could have created more than one stone tablet, although they probably would vary in uh, overall appearance. Those are some pretty cool items, but I can't decide if I should let my players find them. More likely I will. What do you guys think of these items? And I know that from at least one, uh, there's at least one item from the movie that's missing, and that's the Amulet of Invisibility. Though if I had to suspect, I'd guess that they didn't include it in here, as what we've all just found in here are new to the Honor Among Thieves movie. Uh, whereas the Amulet of Invisibility, it's kind of been around for a while. Okay, now to answer your questions. How did you get the printed copy? How do you get these things printed? Yes, how to get printed booklets of stat blocks. I made a step-by-step -step guide in this video. Just be aware that what I print out are only for my use at my gaming table and for commentary in my videos. I will not print copies for you. That would be illegal. Again, tell me what you guys think of these items. Are you going to include them in your next game? Let me know down in the comments, and until next our paths cross, may your hither portal not land face down.